Alrighty, so last time we got our, essentially our final objective of taking down Beatrice. However, wait, hold up a sec. What's up? I've got a plan. If all goes well, we might be able to find out where Beatrice is. Really? Let's see, let's stop by Baskar Colony first. <laughs> I'm pretty sharp today. See, so that is our main objective. Again, however, you might have noticed when we were going through Mimir as well. Northwest. You may have noticed there was a few doors. Also, we picked up a couple of items during that sequence. Key that unlocks the Lord's Chamber inside the Nightmare Castle. And a message from Hyades, the old terminal. Yeah, you may have noticed when we were going through Hyades. Or Mimir as well. That there were doors in there that we could, uh... Well, we can open. Let's have a look, shall we? Yes, there's items in here that we never got a chance to pick up. Get some name tags. So, basically now, we're at the point where I could, we can go straight to the final dungeon. Yes, Beatrice is the, the final enemy. Nightmare Castle is the final dungeon. That is it. That's the end. But, there's a few little side things we want to do before that. Now we'll, we'll be prepared for anything that Beatrice can throw at us. How many duplicates have I got? Two. Hmm. Concerning. Because I believe there's two uh, locked doors in here. Ah, puzzles. I can't just bomb these, can I? Oh! Oh, you can. But it seals the stairs? It's too high to jump, isn't it? Oh, you sneaky. Okay. Oh boy, this place is gonna be fun. Okay! <laughs> Not complaining about that at least. On the bright side, rather than having to move the blocks, we can just bomb our way out. Speaking of a duplicated door. And a migrant seal. That's very nice. Another one? Oh boy, here we go. <sighs> Adventure 9. Unfortunately, I don't think we're done with the block puzzles just yet. Let's keep on going. I believe that's the wrong way. This way. Uh, last duplicator for the last door.
<sighs> right, we're done. Teeny fleer. And a holy loot. I'll be honest, probably not worth it, but hey ho. Now then, here. Now you might remember back to a book we read a long time ago. We were talking about a, a password for Mimir as well. We know one password. Tomorrow. Which will let us get through here. But there was another password. That we can type in. Ameth. Lowercase, by the way. To trigger a super boss. Well, not really. An optional boss, at least. Against Lolithia. Let's do our lucky card. Let's analyze C. Let's see what we got going on here. We to fire! That's a lot of rewards! Yeah, my new strategy with Jet, carrying over from earlier. Build up his FP, let him run out of ammo. Really, I should probably give finding starts to Clive, although I don't know if that uh, dictates the damage, like because he has less ammo, maybe, or less weight. It doesn't do as many hits, so maybe it does less damage. I don't know. I just really don't want to mess with it now, you know. I might respect Jet's weapon to lower his max ammo count, and then put it, put more into weight or shot damage. Just an idea. Not that it matters too much because we are still kicking their ass. Yeah, that's that's that anyway. Now put in the actual password to open the door. To grab these treasure chests. A full carrot and a full Libra. Am I am I am I blind? Oh, there it is. Yes, I am blind. That's personal skill that nullifies all status ailments. Which is quite nice. Let's give it to let's give it to Love Charm. It's probably very expensive, but there we go. Put a couple back into counter-attack, and... Fire ward, I guess. Yeah, there's nothing left of Hyades here anymore. But, with that, we're done at Mimir as well. Just had to get an ambush on the way out though, didn't we? We're gonna be doing... This side quest. The Telepath Towers. Telepath Tower number one is at Battle Redness level one. Will you help protect Phil Gaia by blocking communications with outer space? Sure. Telepath Tower. I don't exactly remember the gimmick for these things. I don't remember them being overly difficult. I don't think they actually attack us, do they? No, well, they do, just not much. Okay. So, Vine's not actually a great strategy at the moment. <sighs> now, that's not a very exciting way of doing a fight. Because it, it takes a minute. So, before I head off to Telepath Tower 2. There's a strategy that you can use. 
Uh, just gotta find the right place. Yeah, if you're gonna want to go to the Dragon's Lair, though not specifically the Dragon's Lair. Basically, I'm trying to find anywhere that has a uh, environment thing that you can damage yourself on. So when I get down to about critical health, that is perfect. Now I just hope I don't get into a random encounter and get uh, healed up. <laughs> one time I don't want vitality okay so for the next telepath tower I'm, ba I'm basically going to be doing this for each telepath tower it does make things a little bit quicker so for the second telepath tower so it should be right around here Telepath Tower 2 is at Battle Readiness Level 2. Let's go. So now this fight should go a lot quicker. Because, you know, the enemy can't really do all that much damage to us, so... All we really have to worry about is the status effects. <laughs> and this one's disease, which is actually perfect. <laughs> I might just let us all catch disease. See, that went so much smoother. Unfortunately, Clive did get healed from that, but <laughs> that's fine. Hopefully, I won't have to do this too many times, because we will eventually just run out of stamina. There it is. Number three. Yeah, most of these fights are going to be the same, so I probably don't even need to show most of them, but at least show the first few. Because overall, there are 15 of those, plus an optional one. The optional one being quite difficult. But as you can see, with each one that we do, they do get more and more health. So really, the fights are not really more difficult, because they still don't do a lot of damage. They only have two attacks. One is a status effect and one is a very weak damage. So really the only difference is they just take longer each time. I have to do this 15 times, so... Seconds before its collapse, this telepath tower releases a sound to the sky like a scream. Almost as if to inform someone of what is happening. I wonder what that could mean. They speak directly into your minds in an inaudible voice that is unlike any other. It seems to express the futility of all communication. So this was unexpected. Because uh, I forgot this happened. After beating the 5th or 6th tower, you get thrown into another fight. Against the Creeping Chaos. Also, the last uh, tower we did inflicted misery. So I don't remember what this guy's gimmick is, so... Hopefully I can just do the same thing again. Confusion, okay. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> oh, Clive, he could just end one of our lives right now. And he went for Jet, of course he did. The one person I wanted alive. So we're not off to a great start, I will admit. Human experimentation. And there's that Defender status guard coming in again. Alright, now we're back into a good rhythm, I think. I don't know how difficult this guy is. Arc and Seal. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Well, that's, uh... <laughs> Okay. So yeah, that is the uh, the trick with these um, with these enemies. They do play with status effects a lot. If there is a way to grind, oh, right. If there's a way to grind for um, 
full status protection. I might do that. I don't think there is, unfortunately. Yeah, you just keep attacking, mate. She's almost out of ammo, so if I can just... If he can survive the next turn, I can have Virginia do... Uh, full carrot? Never mind. I was going to say I could do finest starts and just end this, but... Of course it's not going to be that easy. <clears throat> Why would it be? Okay, I'm going to pivot my strategy a bit here. If Galoz can just survive this... This attack... Which of course he won't, because... Okay, yep. Oh, he is able to cast it though, okay. Since Virginia is immune to everything, I'm just going to focus on her doing everything. She technically is invincible, the only problem is, is she doesn't do a lot of damage on her own. So she still needs Gallows alive to do Valiant. If Jet can survive one turn, we win. Of course, that's a big if. Oh my goodness, we might do it. Full Gatling. And there we go. <laughs> uh, that's one of the uh, fun parts, though, is because um, because with status, the full status ward, because it triggers separately each time for each status effect, because essentially it is the equivalent of equipping all of the different status effects all at once, rather than being its own thing. But because of that, because it's tr when they do the Arc and Seal that's triggering, like, seven status effects at once, it's triggering seven different abilities for protecting against statuses. Which means that Virginia gets quite a good uh, EXP bonus rate from the skill triggers. So, uh, yeah, that could help. She's level 55 now. 56, okay. Silent Presence departs, but its silence seems just like a declaration of war. Okay. So yeah, that was... 14 is a different one. Yeah, that's five. 14 is one that I found earlier, but I didn't um, destroy yet. So I've just done one through five so far. Okay. Well, that was a great start, wasn't it? So after beating the 14th teleport tower, not the last one, the second to last one, Floating disc finishes observation and sinks beneath the dunes as if beckoning you. The last one is in a little bit of an unfortunate position. Sunset Peak. Yes, Lombardia can't get over here. Thankfully, I found it pretty quickly. All right. Renus 15 is the last one. Well, the last mandatory one. There is Teleport Tower 0, which is an optional one, but I'll be honest, I'm not going to do that one. Because its gimmick is it has more health than all of the existing ones and does all status effects. This one already does five different status effects. Thankfully. It's really good for getting the EXP modifier up. Keep attacking Virginia. Love to see that. See, most of these fights have been almost identical. It's just that they use different status effects, so sometimes you have to adjust a little bit as you go. But overall, they're not that difficult. I've basically just been doing the same thing, which is get Valiant up, just keep attacking. Cure status effects as needed as we go. Then get Jet down to uh, 
finest arts, really. <laughs> To finish off the last guy. Because genuinely, once you have the status protection, the rest of the fight is. There's really nothing to be concerned about. Because their Hyperion Beam attack, still, even at this point, doesn't do a whole lot. That nah, is the last one. This is a sound like a scream of death. Reverberates through your molars. Okay, so now we need to head back to Laxis Land. To move forward with the side quest. Once you have destroyed 15, optionally you can destroy number 0, but I'm not, as I said, I'm not going to. 15 teleport towers are, telepath towers are no more thanks to you. However, the forces of chaos are fighting back with all their might. Reports are flooding in from all over, and I felt a greater menace myself. Interplanetary communications confirm the enemy is constructing an advanced teleport telepath tower and is ready to use it. Okay, so now we have another tedious part of the side quest. Head to the Sandcraft and just drive around until we get UFOs. Okay. I will say this has taken me longer than I expected. Now, here's the first of the UFOs. So, pretty much everything with our Sandcraft now is moved to an advantageous position. And once more. And fire all ammo. And that should one-shot basically everything. Yeah, Sandcraft combat is, because it's such a minor thing that you don't do all that often, it's not very well balanced. Once you get the Arc Smasher, yeah, yeah, pretty much everything just dies. Anyway, now we're just gonna run around until we find five of them. There's also other monsters on the uh, overworld that we haven't seen yet. We're still not gonna see much of them, although we do get to see their pretty interesting designs. For a moment before they die. <laughs> but yeah, the UFOs just appear anywhere. They're just a random encounter. I don't think you have to go to different areas or anything. Like they're just, they're just around, you know. All right, so we're back with the fifth UFO. This is definitely the least interesting part of this side quest because you don't even get any good rewards for beating them. Like they give you like 600 experience points. Not really worth it. Uh, the floating disc releases skin tingling waves of shock and fades into a void of nothingness. The strange pattern it leaves gives you a sense of foreboding. So now, we just want to dock somewhere. So, the next part of the side quest. Now, oh, there we go. There's now UFOs to fight on Lombardia as well. Phenomenal. You all know how much I love Lombardia fights. Yeah, basically, with this part of the side quest, if you fly around on Lombardia and fight 20 of these. Couldn't just be five or ten, could it? Nope, they had to make it twenty. So... <laughs> so... Twenty UFOs later, I finally get this message. As the chaos falls repeated, it wheezes a high-pitched breath. The sound spreads like a splash of water and silently shakes Phil Gaia's atmosphere. Soon the trembles mix with a distant beat and herald the arrival of the Mothership of Chaos. Now, I believe what that means is that we just fly around a bit more. Also, one thing I was doing while I was uh, flying around is just filling in the map. It's just another UFO. Not what I was looking for. Okay, so we just gotta keep flying around fighting UFOs until eventually a big one appears. I love how non-specific that, that, that is. But basically, what I was doing while I was doing the fights is just Anywhere there's those unfilled in squares. I've just been going around and filling in the map. I don't think there's a reason to. 
I don't think you get anything for doing it, but it helps my, uh, helps my OCD a bit. Nope, still not it. Okay. Oh, we found it. Okay. We will do a soft regeneration. Mothership, yeah, there we go. Okay. And also, I should probably pre <laughs> should probably preface. <coughs> should probably mention this side quest probably isn't even all that worth doing, at, at least past this point. Or at least to like to the end. Doing the teleport towers themselves is probably good because you, you get a decent amount of experience for it. So I did get quite a few levels from doing the top off towers. When you start taking on the UFOs, which don't give you much experience, and the final reward for this is not something that's going to help us all that much. And also, it takes so long. I've been trapped in this side quest hell for ages. Oh my god, I did it! Uh, you can see it by our health. Took a while. Do get quite a bit of experience though, and there's the actual reward, the EX file key. That is the actual reward for this quest. The encroaching force of chaos was struck by Lombardi's attack and disperses into the skies of Filgaia. But the menace still remains. Chaos has already infiltrated the planet and may be biding its time. <sighs> well, that's a problem for another story. As for us, we're now done with that side quest. Thank fuck. Uh, Lombardia fights, in my opinion, are not great. They just take so long and you have so few options of what to do. There's no real way of gaining TP throughout the battle, so you're just sitting there, really. Before I do with the garden, I know I'm already here, but let's go to Joy Roger and rest up to restock everything and uh, get a few more points for the, the garden ticker. That side quest took a lot longer than I was expecting it to, so uh, I was going to record the ending today, but... Now I'm exhausted, so there's a few, a few things. Seven mega berries will be nice. Yeah, yeah, that'll do.